and welcome back to Barley and Hops. I'm George. Yes, this is the channel that dares to unlock the mysteries of home distilling. Oh, and we're so glad you're back with us today. Please, subscribe. Costs you absolutely nothing. But yes, I do benefit from that, so I would appreciate it. Share us with your friends and comment below. Now, today we're going to talk about the Rex C100. Now, for those of you who are with us and you've decided to stick with us, we appreciate it, of course. Um, you can flip through this video as many times as you want. Uh, I'm, I'm going to do the very best I can to outline and describe uh, from the Chinese directions that you get uh, to actually assembling very briefly and I've done this on just a piece of wood, the Rex C100 um, PID controller. Now, these are relatively inexpensive, and I've mentioned this before. They are a good controller, all right? They are not the best controller. Um, your better controllers, of course, will cost more money, and they will have more functions, more duality, um, more ability to do different things, um, and in a lot of cases, we in this community are not, no, we just don't need all that excess. This is a really a basic standalone PID temperature controller, has very minimal functions. Um, I, I normally use ink birds, and here I'm putting, I've got seven of these things that I'm assembling now, and, and they're at different stages. And you can see I use the ink bird controllers. Uh, I've also used, I use my pin as well. Um, now, they're a little bit more expensive, um, but they're a little bit more reliable as well. Their failure rate is very, very low. Um, the Rex C100 is not the most reliable. Um, let's leave it at that. But will it work? Absolutely. Uh, you can get these, sometimes you can buy these for like 16 bucks. Uh, they use the, they work on the same principle as our ink birds, as our my pins. Uh, as our Auber instruments, um, and there are oodles and oodles of companies that make these, okay? Good. I got that out of the way. We're going to get to this thing here in a minute because I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to set the parameters, what the parameters are, what they mean, and how to actually function with this because it's relatively simple once you unlock the mysteries of the Chinese language. Uh, and we'll get to that. First, I want to say thank you. Uh, one of our viewers wrote in to me and made an offer and said that he makes, he's got a 3D printer and he makes, he noticed that I keep yeast sealed in a mason jar as well as yeast nutrient. Yes, and uh, he printed up some caps that go on top. And I'm sure you can see that. One says daddy and the other says nutrient. And uh, they are really, really neat. And and I'll tell you, I'll apologize up front. I lost your contact information. So if you're out there, please send me an email. I just wanted to say up front, thank you very much. He sent, one, he sent a pair of these to me, and I'm going to use them from here on out. So I just want to get that cleared. Now, um, I'm headed out on a, we're taking barley and hops on the road. Yes, about a month ago, I got in touch with those who have subscribed and also click the bell for the notifications. That creates a community. Um, and in that little community icon, uh, I can actually communicate directly back and forth with everyone who's done that. Uh, so I put out a couple of feelers and asked some questions about taking barley and hops on the road. And the overwhelming response was wonderful. And I do appreciate all the concerns about COVID-19. And yes, we will be absolutely safe. But here at the end of the month, uh, I'm going to take a road trip. I'm going down to see Mike, our, uh, our most favorite blind distiller, who is absolutely amazing. We're going to do videos along the way, and we're going to share those with you. But what I'm doing is I'm, what I'm taking down to Mike is this is, uh, this is actually his controller that uh, I'm rebuilding. Of, of, of actually, what, I'm do what I've done was I've taken the audible PID controller, because, of course, Mike is blind, so everything he does has to be audible. And the audible proof and trail hydrometer are both in one unit now, so it makes it so much more user-friendly. Oh, I added a, an accessory switch on the front for his water pump. Uh, I did put a visual aid here, uh, and that's for anyone who's with him who can help him. Uh, this is a volt amp meter for him. 
Uh, but and, but everything else is still basic. You know, I've got volume control knobs on left side and on the bottom here. There's also a beeper inside as an indicator every time the solid state relay fires, uh, and you can adjust the volume on that. And just it, it's an indicator to let you know when your element is on. Uh, so there's so many functions on here that are just amazing. Uh, so I'm looking forward to taking this down and hooking it up with good old Mike, and then we're going to make a run while I'm down there. So uh, stay tuned. We're going we're gonna to keep you updated on our trip on the way down. Uh, I've also, through that community contact, uh, I've got three different places that I'm going to stop along the way. So we're going to get a chance to see other people. Uh, we're going to get a chance to interact with the community, which is just a amazing and most importantly I'm gonna let I'm gonna have them share their success stories with you so isn't that a wonderful thing yes so we're gonna get to this I've got to move all these out of the way and <coughs> one last one last idea that I had and I'm gonna start this real soon uh, matter of fact this is the first notification of it is if you would like to have your still highlighted on one of these videos, I'd love to be able to just put a picture up of you and your still. Um, and then uh, if you've communicated with me and told me as much as you can about it or what you would like other people to know, uh, I would love, I would just, I would sincerely enjoy sharing your success stories with everybody else. Uh, and this could be a manufactured still, one that you've made yourself or, hey, what about the Frankenstein model, where you put a whole bunch of different things together, but you've got a good, successful uh, run in a system that works? Share your ideas with other people, but it's a chance we can highlight your particular still. And I like to do that. So just send them in to me. Send me an email with a photo of your setup and a little bit of a description, and then I'll get right at it, okay? And I'll start po posting. I'll publish those on upcoming videos. Now... I've also got my audio, I believe I've got my audio uh, resolved, a little bit of a learning curve there, uh, and uh, for those who are going to write in and say, George, you talk too much, trust me, in the comments, I'll get them, they'll say, yeah, yeah, the first seven minutes, you never even covered it, uh, okay, I covered a lot of information in seven minutes, work with me, let's get to the Rex C100. Now that you've got my better side, let's get started. This is the Berm Rex C100. Comes in this small box. Now you'll notice on the end of this box here, with this model number, all of these, all of these numbers actually have a meaning. All right, and the ones that we're most concerned with, of course, we know the Rex C100. The 100 is actually just nothing more than the size. Um, it, there's a table on here that'll tell you exactly what size is. K-type thermal couple. Um, then there's V, A, and N. And that is that has to do with alarm settings, upper limit. Um, it, it just tells you what the restrictions of what this model is capable of doing. Here's our output. Our output is SSR, solid state relay. That's what we want to use. Uh, our range is 0 to 1300 degrees Celsius K. That's what the K-type thermal probe. Um, and the rest of it's just supply information. Okay. Um, go through this now it, this now you're going to get a chance to see how well I read Chinese which I don't so luckily they've got a an English version on the other side and this is what you're kind of stuck with uh, and this can be actually foreign to you if you're not familiar with some of these terms and what they actually mean and we're going to go through that but the two blocks that are really really the only the one block that's really most important to you is this block right here. Uh, and this tells you what your alarm settings are, um, tuning, proportional integral derivative band, um, then hit down here we have R, this is the timing as a work period, that's th your control cycle, and then of course your lock key. So that's really the block that we are concerned with and that we are going to spend our time talking about. Now, these things are amazing. This particular model, and as I said before, all models do different things, and you have different capabilities. In this particular model, let me plug this in, and it goes through its self-start, its self-test. Uh, there you go, input, centigrade, K-type coupler, and there we go. Um, see, I've got this set. Here's your set value here at the bottom, and there's your perceived value. 
Well, it actually it's called process value. That's what PV stands for. Let's get a little closer. Now what you'll see here is the way I have this set up, this is, this is really a rudimentary static setup, all right? All I've got is I've got a power cord that's coming in. This is a, this one's a hot, a hot lead, and a new, this one is the neutral lead. And then I've tapped off the hot lead that goes to the back of my controller. I've tapped off the neutral lead, goes to the back of the controller. Then I've got the positive negative for the solid state relay out and hooks to the solid state relay positive negative. Now you'll notice this light's on, which means that it's already sent a signal to this relay to connect these two points. Um, and you know I always use, I like using a light bulb. I've got one over here. Let me turn it. There, you can see I've turned that on. Uh, there's my light bulb. So every time that, see, every time that this cycles and turns on, that light turns on. Um, and I, let me show you this. I'm going to turn this light off so it doesn't get in our way for right now. And I'll show you how that works in just a moment. You have a set value on the bottom, and that's the, the temperature that you set that you want this thing to control. The process value, which I like to call the perceived value, is the value sensed by your temperature probe, thermal couple, whatever you want to call it. Now, this is a small one. It, it's just as good as the long two inch, and that is equally as good as the long six. And you can get these things as long as 12 inches long if you want them that way. But these all work exactly the same way. And they work based on temperature by metals, two different opposing metals, and resistance. Uh, so you'll see this light flashing. This is the out light. That means that my solid state relay, you see it's functioning. It, what it's doing is, it's, I've got it set to 30. It's sensing 29. It's really close to 30, and it doesn't want to come on 100%. What it's doing is it's sending bursts of energy to what it's thinking is an element there it's reached 30 so it won't it won't flash any longer because it's where it's supposed to be if i increase this temperature and this temperature is not agreeing that's the error difference between these two it will come on again let me demonstrate all you do is push the set button one time and let's increase that temperature by four degrees celsius now you'll notice that the light immediately comes on. My solid state relay comes on. That means that my light, see my light is on, I just turned it back on. Let's reset that down to a lower value, lower than our perceived value, and see what happens. There, the light goes out. It, the numbers are now equal. Let's set it for a lower temperature, 27. So right now I'm sensing 30 degrees Celsius here, but my set value is 27. So it's above my set value. It's not going to give me any power to my light or to my element. That's how a PID works. Now let's get into the parameters. This is the fun part. Uh, I'm getting ready. I'll do a video here shortly on exactly what P, I, and D are. So you can fully understand exactly what a controller like this does. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's, let's go into the actual settings, because there's only a handful of settings that you need to be really concerned with. If we push the set button and hold it for about three seconds, your display at the top will change to AL1. AL1 is the alarm setting for your first alarm. Um, and that, right now it's set at 50. Um, I, 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 you could use an alarm if you want to. That doesn't make any difference to me. Then this was the ARU. And uh, ARU is a self-tuning mode. And the way this is set is if you want this thing to be self-tuning, zero is off. And one is would be self-tuning. So you would change it to one, hit set, and then it would be self-tuning. Then we go to the next one, P. P is your proportional band. When you get this, um, there's no telling what's going to be in there. I set it to 1. I, your integral, this one is set to 240. Let's change that by moving, the, moving it over, and you use this left arrow key to move it over. 540. D is set to 60. 
we're going to make that 200. Now you see, you just work your way through each digit. Now we come to AR. Uh, and AR is actually an auto-tune. It, it automatically sets itself. Leave that alone. Then we have R. And R is the working period. That is your control cycle. And we want this to happen every second. We want it to happen every second, so we just leave that at one. Then we go to SC. And SC is really, it's more, it's called this an offset. So as an example, if, you're, if you drop this into a, uh, a pot of boiling water and it's not reading 100 on your process value, you can put an offset in here and say, okay, well, it's reading 101, so negative 1. Then when it does actually feel that temperature, it'll read 100 instead of 101. So it's just it's an offset value. Well, there we go. Let's go back into it again. You see, if you leave it alone for about 30 seconds, it'll automatically go back to uh, it's just operational function. So there's alarm one, ARU, P, proportional band, integral, derivative, AR, our control cycle, timing, and our offset. And then last but not least is lock. Yours may come, it, and it all depends on how they're packaged and boxed. I have found that 1,000 selected on here allows me to get to the next menu. But the next menu is not necessary for us because that would be changing it to do cooling, uh, changing uh, some of the other variables that we're not even functioning with. Uh, and then last but not least, there it goes back. Uh, if you get to the code, um, and I'll show you that. If you push set and the left arrow button and hold it for about five seconds, you'll notice it says COD. Now we're into another menu, which is a code. And if I push the up arrow button one time, that allows me to get into the code that I'm looking for. And this is these are just advanced settings. And these are the ones, please, don't mess with them. It, some of these have a setting in here where you can change the decimal points. This one does not come equipped with that capability. So just you're, you're best off leaving it alone. So as a final... And we're going to give this time because, as I told you, it'll go, see, it'll go back to its original. Um, I'm going to leave that light turned on. And let's change this set value. Just push the set button one time until it starts to flash. And it'll highlight the digit that you're going to change. That's the only digit that won't flash. We're going to make that, uh, let's make that, yeah, let's make it 32. 32 degrees Celsius. Now you notice my light came on. Now if I hold this in my hand, uh, you'll start to see a change take place. There's 29, 30. At 31, it starts to function. There's 32. It reached its temperature, so it shuts off. Now as it sets here for a while, it'll start to cycle on and off on a periodic cycle. As in, as it starts to drop below 32, and since we can't change this to more decimal places, another reason why I don't use these, um, you can't see what's going on. You have to wait for a whole increment of Celsius before this makes any changes. Um, as it starts to sense that drop in temperature, there, see, it'll give it, it'll give it a little bit of energy. It'll say, oh, okay, you're, you're dropping below 32. You haven't got to 31 yet. But let me give you some power and see if you'll uh, see if I can arrest that drop. And then it'll come on full and just run because this is still dropping. So I'll hold it in my hand again. You'll notice that it goes off. The temperature started to rise again. That's how this proportional integral derivative Rex C100 operates. So that's it. For those of you inquiring minds that really wanted to know how to set the parameters on a Rex C100, that's as simple as it absolutely gets. This is the most basic model of proportional integral derivative controller on the market. All right? Now, uh, it does not have the same capabilities as the Inkbird or the MyPen. Uh, you don't have the same flexibility with some of the settings, being able to go to Fahrenheit, using multiple 
decimal points, decimal places. This one will not do that. Uh, it just gives you whole figures. Uh, but it works. Um, and if you're into it for just a couple of dollars, I mean, why not give it a try? All right? So, yes, we're getting ready for that trip. We're going to head it out in about two weeks. And, um, yes, I'll make my way down through southern Louisiana, across Alabama, and wherever it takes me into Florida. Yep, absolutely. Yep, we got three stops to make along the way. We're going to share their stories with you, their systems, and I'm sure you'll enjoy that. So please stay tuned. Share us with your friends. Again, subscribe, hit the icon button, and be part of the community that we get to communicate with on a regular basis, we back and forth. Uh, this is a valuable, valuable resource, and we do not want to waste it. So, until next time, hmm, yes, happy distilling.